front headlock, achieving the front headlock, and then getting some chokes, head and arm stuff from there, and doing some devastation. So the first part, just a quick series. So I have a lock up here. Now back to fundamentals, when we tie up, my shoulders are forward, okay? My shoulders are forward, Greco style, my elbows are locked in, my head's up, I achieve wrist control, I'm fighting through levels, okay? I want here. When I grab the wrist, guys, I want three points of contact. One, two, and the back of my hand is pushing through, through, to turn his hand out. That'll set up your double wrist locks. Not gonna do that right now, but as sure as heck works, because where does he have to go to bend his arm out? He bends his arm, now I can pull the head and go for double wrist locks. So always turn the palm out. So I turn here, grab here. Now I'm safe to go for the collar tie. If I just grab a collar tie on John, who's wrestled his whole life here, my legs are exposed and I have one arm trying to stop a 270 pound monster from taking me down. Not, nothing's in my favor in that position. So I need to keep, I need to make sure that it's my tie up or no tie up at all. So when I come in, I'm in a good stance, get my wrist control as low as possible, maximum leverage, index finger and thumb, as low as possible. One, two, three, turn the palm out. Now I come with the collar tie. The collar tie goes all the way to the ear. I can't be doing this stuff here because he's just gonna reach up and he's gonna peel it off like it's nothing. I don't care how strong your hands are, you're gonna lose it, especially if you're sweaty. So I go all the way over to the ear. And then I hook my elbow right down the chest to kind of break his stance a little bit, okay? Now from here, once I have this, I'm gonna change my right foot forward because I'm not gonna snap him to this side. If I snap him to this side, he duck unders. Why? Because I didn't club him. You can never snap to the same side without clubbing them first. I have positive control and a trap set on this side. Why would I go to the other side? So I'm locked up. My right foot is here because I want him to come halfway to me and I wanna go halfway to him for maximum efficiency. So I'm locked up, elbow tight, I drive in, when he drives back, it's there. My weight is on the base of his neck. I still have his wrist, we've done this before. Have to have his wrist or he's gonna be on my legs right away. Now I chop, outside hand, palm up. Down near the tricep, up here, push up, John. Too strong, I'm not gonna win that. At the elbow, push up, I got a shot. I got a shot here with leverage. Now I release, and I'm not as gripping, I'm going right here with a thumbless grip, which we don't do a whole lot, because you know, normally without the gi, we go full thumb. I'm using this, and we've done it before, guys. When we go to the choke, my head goes where? Down into the well, and I look back at my knees. But I need to close this hole. So this left hand, I'm flexing my forearm, and now I do a rowing motion where I pull back to get to the choke, okay? So that's the first part. From there, we'll keep moving. I got my choke, or maybe I didn't get my choke, but I'm here, I'm in a great position. Whenever a choke doesn't work, the neck cranks your next best option. So what I do is I step across so that his head gets buried into my ribs and I'll turn my cutting bone across his jaw. So I step across, turn his head, so his, my, jaw, my cutting bone's going through his jaw. I don't just lift up like I'm curling, I hip in to get the crank. I'm taking his ear and hiding it down into his shoulder. The last part is to step in salto. I'm already in position. I don't need to take another step really, but I wanna maintain 45 degrees. Your opponent is always your 90, base it off of that. So if I'm here, I step in here, I'm 45, I sit, he goes, my grip doesn't change. Positive control all the way. Now watch, I don't have to walk around and hook his leg or any of that nonsense. Power choke grip, I squeeze, and I have my cutting bone right there, and I pull. One inch, and it's series one. Okay, so taking another look at series one off the front headlock, getting into our head and arm series here. We're starting off again, same concept, same principles. My elbows are tight inside my ribs. If there's space here, John's gonna underhook me in the next year. I can't allow that. We don't give up underhooks, okay? My shoulders are forward, and my elbows are in here. There's no space. If you watch a good Greco guy, they don't go here or here. The shoulders hunch forward Quasimodo style into here to make you work for that inside tie. And you're gonna have to work for it. So now I'm here, boom. Three points contact, one, two, three, palm out. 
slap that collar tie all the way to the ear. My right foot comes forward because I need this forward because he's coming halfway to me, I'm going halfway to him. I push in, he pushes back, boom, lock it. My weight is on the base of his neck. Chop, outside hand, palm up, straight to the power choke grip. Thumbless grip, that means the whole hand, right? Full thumb, thumbless, because that allows me to take all these inches out. Just like you would take the inches out of a triangle choke, which we'll go over later. My head goes down, I look back at my knees, pull some weight back, flex, and I didn't have to pull. But I want you to pull on, okay? Get rid of the hole. So I'm here, look at the hole. Boom, and boom, make it go away. Take out all the slack and the submission will happen along the way during the attack, okay? So we've nailed that. Now, if for some reason, you've got, if you come across a double jointed opponent or, or a partner, sometimes head and arm chokes are the hardest thing to get on a double jointed person, but neck cranks will help you out. So we come in across. I don't want to overextend, so when I step in, I stay low. I don't need to be down here, but I just keep some weight on, and I step in tight. I turn that cutting bone, and I hip in to get the neck crank. Step in to 45, drop, here. My grip stayed tight, right, John? Yes, sir. I don't let go, I have something. This is my lifeline. Same power choke grip. Squeeze the arm across, and then I row straight into the neck. Okay, series two picks up where we left off. Same position, we're not gonna go back to the throw. Study it, move on, once you got it, here we go. So we've landed in that position. I'm gonna keep my positive control. So, so John and I have landed. My choke, power choke grip is gonna stay here. I need this tight. And guys, I'm not really pulling and squeezing as much as I am just trying to keep everything tight here. Because I don't want to be sitting here, anytime you get into a choke position and you kind of squeeze for more than 15 seconds, you start getting that lactic acid build up in your arms and you just get fried. It's just awful for the rest of your match. Okay? So from here, when, when I move to my next one, when we talk about positive control and how I transition, which is one of our key factors here on this DVD, when I shoot across on this, I don't want to go all the way here. Say I left his arm and he's gonna drive his elbow down. He's gonna beat me there. Okay, I can't have that. I just lost my control. Catch is offensive in nature because of positive control. So I keep this here. Okay, now watch. I shoot across at closest his tricep as possible and then I grab my tricep. I come back a little bit. I walk my hands down nice and tight and then I chest up a little bit and I give a little squeeze. It doesn't even take a half inch if it's tight enough. Okay, so again, cross from here, shoot across to your tricep, I'm a little bit below the tricep heads. Then I come down, itsy bitsy spider, right down to here, chest up and squeeze. And what this allevi alleviates is, is getting into this type of grip and walking around and John just walks left with his feet, he goes the other direction, we play this game all day and I'm achieving nothing and making myself tired. So we want to be as efficient as possible on all of our attacks. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Let's say you just can't get this. I never lost control during this because I kept pressure. So I can easily slide right back to this. Now I'm gonna keep this power choke grip. I'm not gonna try and tear him up with it, but I'm gonna bridge. When I bridge, guys, when we bridge, my hips and shoulders rotate in unison. The same way you would in a jiu-jitsu class to get to your side. Bridging is exactly the same thing. It's just you're not shrimping. So when I'm locked in here, when I bridge, my butt comes up, I'm driving this elbow, dropping my knee, and putting pressure on his head to rotate around. My grip stays the same, I drive in flat. He's tapping there because my arm's pretty darn tight. If it's a little looser, sometimes you have to flatten him out and use your leg to crank that head up, almost like a fisherman in a cradle. Okay, now one thing I want to look at from here, or actually two things, we have this grip, and it's a front headlock still, but the gap control that I have here, we talk about our gaps a lot, is the same gaps as your three-quarter Nelson, also known as a Dars. It's a three-quarter Nelson in catch. So that gap is there. I punch through, get to my elbow. I grab his elbow. If you look through, I have my elbow and his elbow. I don't need to switch anything else right now. 
I squeeze it nice and tight. Make sure I'm 45. Put my head in the hole, get off my knees, squeeze and sprawl. Taps before I hit the ground. Did I do it right? You okay, Wallace? Yep. So I know I did it right, right? Now, last but not least, I'm gonna set this up a little differently. If he's strong and he pulls his arm down, his left arm goes down, boom. I still have his head. So I'm gonna punch up under like I'm throwing a chancery. So what I, what I mean by that is I'm coming up through here quickly to close that off. And what I'm gonna do is, is a guillotine modified, or modified guillotine, which some of you may know as a ninja choke. It's a pretty popular term right now. But it's just an old school setup off of a chancery throw. So I was here, his arm dries down. I keep this arm here, open the hole, and throw that through. Now I switch to the bicep grip because I'm in a great position to do it. Because see how deep I can get? Otherwise, I don't like the bicep grip that much. From here, you can squeeze here if you get it tight enough. But to really make it vicious, get off your knees, flatten them, and squeeze in for a quick kill. Let's take another look at series two again. So we did our step in and throw off the power choke grip, front headlock. I'm right here, okay? Again, the transition. If I can't seem to squeeze and get that choke where it picked off from series one, I shoot across at the elbow. And I mean launch that arm, because the further you launch that arm, the better grip you're gonna get here. I don't like the bicep grip a lot, because it gets sweaty, and plus it's muscle and fat. Muscle and fat move. It's not like grabbing down here, where you get that tight grip that's really hard to slip. So I need to get as deep around that tricep as possible, then come back and itsy bitsy spider as far as I can, chest up and get a little squeeze, okay, for the first one. Now, if I can't get that, he's driving that elbow down, he's taking my butt, ah, crap. I can still switch back by grinding to my power choke grip. I'm staying away from my gable. My hand slipped a little far, but I don't want a gable on this because I can't turn my gable in the way I can this to get rid of those inches, to get rid of every centimeter, okay, and get rid of all the space and all the slack on the submission. So I'm locked in here. Now again, bridging. When I bridge, my shoulders and hips rotate in unison, and I'm driving his head by throwing my right out by right shoulder. So I bridge, I drop the knee, pressure on his head, come around, keep the front headlock grip, start driving in and cranking down. There's your crank. You may get a choke. It's probably gonna be a little more crank, pressure almost like a fisherman crank. Okay, you right, done? Yep. But I have now, like we talked about a minute ago, my gap control. Gap control is so important, especially when we talk about like, the defense position in turtle. Same concepts here, guys. It has to apply to everything. I have the same gaps I need for the front headlock that I use for the three-quarter. So I open up, punch through, get to the elbow, get to his elbow, put my head down, squeeze, sprawl. There's my tap. From there, if you guys remember where I went, he fights down with his elbow, but my left arm is still on his head. If I can chin strap, it's great, because I'll open him up and then throw that chancery. But I'm not worried about that as long as I got a good grip on his head. I'm gonna throw the arm up again, right through here. An old school chancery is here, but it's the same throw that I'm doing here. So I'm here, I come through, now I grab here. And this is the one that we were talking about. All it is is a modified guillotine that a lot of guys are calling a ninja choke. If you get it deep enough and walk this hand up high enough, Johnny, feel it getting tighter? Mm -hmm. Give it a good squeeze, you get it there, yeah. make it meaner, Pin him down. Now squeeze it. Okay. 